complexion to look smooth and try to take away some of the wrinkles of my age. And I got my old trusty grungy sweater that my dogs have all snagged up with their nails, but it keeps me warm and cozy. And I promised you guys that I was going to try really hard in the next couple weeks to do a video on how to make your own jar candles. And so let's get started because there's a lot of things and it's going to have to be done in multiple steps. There's a lot of tools and, you know, ingredients and things like that. And so I'm going to compile it all into one video, but this will probably have to be done in several different phases. So let's get started. We're going to start with the jars and the wicks. These are 16 ounce glass jars right here. And I get these from, uh, I think, let me look. I ordered these from Nature's Garden in Wellington, Ohio. And they come with these lids. They're metal lids, screw top lids. They're glass jars. And so that's what I'm gonna be making candles out of today. First, we're going to start with the wicks. The ideal size wicks for 16 ounce jars are CD12s, but I don't have any of those left. So I'm going to be using the CD22, and the CD14 would work as well. These are thicker wicks, as you can see right here. These are the CD22, and these are thicker, the cords, the cotton. And let's see if I can find the CD14. Here's the CD14s. And let me hold it up to the CD22. If you can tell the difference, I don't know. I'm trying to hold it here so you can see them both on camera. These CD14 and these are the CD22. So the, here's the difference. There's these here, the 22s, are a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for those. And what we're going to do is, as you can see, my hot glue gun here. We're going to hot glue right in the middle of the jar. We're going to hot glue each one of these into the middle of the jar. Here is the wick, CD22, and we are going to put a drop of hot glue on the bottom. And we're going to stick it right in the center of this. And I have clips, wick clips which look like these, and you can also get them at the same place that we got the wicks and the wax and everything else, the fragrances, they have everything you need there. And so this is what it looks like. Let me get it glued into the bottom. And I'm gonna get a skewer, just to help me poke these down all the way at the bottom of the jar. And then we've got the wick holder because we want to keep that wick taut and we want to keep it in the middle of the jar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the rest of these. I've got six out because I'm doing different fragrances tonight. To help me center these and press them gently down into the bottoms of the jar. And then I'll get the wick clip. We'll get this inside the little I'll show you the wick clips so that if you've never used them before, you know what they are. I use them. Let me grab another wick. Okay, what you're going to do with the wick clip, you see this little perforated area right here? When this is glued at the bottom of your glass jar, you're going to wedge it in here in the little perforation. Let's see if I can get it in here so you can see it. Just like that. You're just going to wedge it in there into the little per perforated area that's slit right there. And then this will be glued into the bottom of your jar. Now coming over here with my skewer and put it 
right in the center of the jar at the bottom, and I'm using my skewer to help position it where I want it, and press it down into the glass jar. And we'll do one more, and then I'll put my candle holders, my wick holders, I mean. to you the type of wax that I got. Um, I have Joy Wax. I found that to be the easiest and the best to use for jar candles. And you want to melt your Joy Wax at 200 degrees. So let me swing this around now. This is Joy Wax right there. And I'm going to be cutting that into smaller chunks so that it doesn't take it forever to melt because you're melting it at a very low temperature. So we're going to use a butcher knife. Let me get these wicks picked up and moved out of the way. So it comes in a big slab like this. But I have a smaller section that was in the bag with it. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that first. It's very easy to cut. It's like butter. I'm going to put them in the pan over here. And I will show you the pan once I get everything in there. We have to do things in steps. Because I don't have enough counter space. I wish I had a huge island like a professional chef's kitchen, but I don't. want a thermometer, temperature thermometer gun like this because you're going to have to test your wax when it's melted because there's a certain temperature you have to wait for it to get to before you can pour it into your jar. And we also have to color and fragrance it. And I only use that little mini, um, I don't know what you want to call it, a kitchen kettle with a, a gauge on it. I only use that for candle making. I do not use it for food because once you're melting non-food items in something, you, of course you know, you guys, that you don't want to use it for food. Very easy, just very light pressure. There's different waxes for different things that you want to make. If you're wanting to make tapered candles, that would not be this wax. This wax is specifically for jars, tea lights, and also if you wanted to make the um, warmer wax, you know, the wax warmers, then you would use this wax as well. And it carries a really good throw with the fragrance. over to the kettle. And I'm going to bring you over and show you the wax at the kettle. There we go. Let me zoom out because we don't need it that zoomed in. And it's melting slowly. And we have it set on 200 degrees. Okay, so we want that to turn all melted, and then we'll start pouring some in here and weighing it on our scale, and 
we will fragrance that and make a few candles in certain fragrances and then pour some more in there and make them in fragrant, different fragrances. So I'll bring you back when this is melted. Okay, while we're waiting for the wax to cool, these are the color blocks that you can also buy from the same place. And I have blue, teal, purple, yellow, and green. And you don't use much of this if you don't want them super, super dark. I am not a person that really likes candles that are like super dark. I, I like them on the lighter side just because the interior of my home are basically in pastels or very light grays. And I have kind of a light pastelish green kind of on my main living. So I'm not using a lot. I'm just going to use like a little fraction cut off of these. Also, I wanted to suggest for those of you that are on a very tight budget, you can use these to scent and to color your melted wax. Crimson is one of my favorite uh, wax melts. So if you're really tight on a budget and you have the Joy Wax but you don't have the funds uh, to buy the colorant and then also to buy the, the fragrance oils because fragrance oils are pretty expensive. You could use a whole package of these and drop them into your oil in order to color them and to fragrance them as well. Because I only have two of these, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut them smaller of these wax, these wax melts. And I am going to add these into my first batch because I love this fragrance. Because you can get those uh, wax melts pretty cheap at Walmart in those bins that are back by the movies and the electronics. They have them sometimes for 50 cents or 25 cents for each of these packages. That would be when you want to go and spend 10 or 20 dollars picking up those. Okay, let's turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom in. I always get it wrong when I try to zoom. Let's see if I can lift this up a little bit. There we go. There, maybe. Okay. So I'm going to use, where's the utensil that I was going to use? Right here. I got this at Salvation Army and it's rusted. So I'm going to be using this to scoop it out and to put it in here because it'll be easier to handle. To pour it into the jars. After these are melted in here, I'm going to start weighing out my fragrance. To add frankincense and mirth, Burmese wood, and charred sandalwood. 
and you want to use one and a half ounces of fragrance per one pound of wax. Right now I'm weighing out my fragrances. I put one ounce of the frankincense and myrrh. One ounce of the Burmese wood. One ounce of the charred sandalwood. This was oak leaves and acorn and Abercrombie. This way. Oh, I forgot to put a. Did I have to get that? I'm just going to pour a little bit in here and then I'm going to put a little bit of my coloring to make it darker. Like I said, I like very light colors when I'm doing my candles. I'm not someone that likes them super dark. Okay. We're going to scoop up some more wax into my pitcher. Okay, now we're going to get some more wax out of the kettle. I love making candles. And color really isn't important to me, but if it is to you, you can you can use more coloring and make it super dark if you wish. That's just not something that I really care about. I care about the fragrance and having candles. It's always good to have that. Okay, two more whips. No kitty. My cat just loves boxes. I'm gonna we'll check the temperature again. Okay, perfect. Hoping that you can see me. I'm trying, let me move to the side. I'm trying to do this so that you can see. This, whoops, this is the teal.
Wonderful. Now I'm going to wipe this out. You always want to wipe out your containers with paper towel while the wax is still liquidy. Don't let it harden up because while you wipe it out and it's liquidy, it comes right out onto a paper towel. You never want to dump wax down your drain toilets or anything of that nature. It will destroy your plumbing or your septic. We live out in the country and there's no way that we want to pay for a new septic because that's around five to six thousand dollars here in the Midwest. So that's definitely not something that we want to incur. I always use paper towels. And I'm going to go ahead and chop up some more wax. I'll bring it over. Um, but I don't know. Candles, those are really yummy. I just like a, you know, I like my home to smell and to look homey and, and just look delicious. It makes you feel good, keeps you in a positive mindset in life. Because I believe that we attract what we think deep down inside ourselves and, you know, the silent thinking. And then if we verbalize it on top of it, any negativity then that's what the universe brings forth and surrounds us with. Even if that's not really what we want to surround us, we want positivity, we want happy moments. You know, we don't want a bunch of problems. We don't want appliances and cars breaking down and, you know, everything seeming like, gosh, everything's going to crap all at once. We don't want that. So... You want to do everything you can to make your home just delicious to where you love being there and, you know, just homey and cozy and relaxing. Well, I wanted to show you guys the finished candles. Um, my recorder stopped recording because the battery died. It's a long process to make candles, so here's this, and there's no pooling or rivering. I'm turning it so that you can see all the sides. It smells wonderful. This one's the pine. And it's lighter pink with kind of an, uh, an orangey cream on top. And these are kind of a perfumey musk smell. Oh, they smell good. And then I had enough left over to make a couple tea lights. These are pine smell. So, there's my candles, and it made a whole bunch of them. I got 12 of these size, and I made three of these tea lights. Okay, guys, I hope this inspires you to make your own candles. I'll try to leave some links in the subject uh, box below where <clears throat> you can get the um, Joy Wax for the jar, and you can also get the jars, the wicks. You can buy everything you need to make candles. Alright, have a great day. See you next video.